inspire church, showing people all they can become in Christ. It's good to be together this morning, enjoying the Lord and giving Him another big hand clap this morning. Now, for time to look around, bring as many people as you can. One side, the other, back to the front, back to the back, all around. If you don't know, don't know if you're welcome. The very best reading in the house this morning. to all the things that are going on in the life of the church. 
because when you're filling your care cards in, you can't hardly see the news on the screen as well as filling your care card in. So pay attention to that one. Also, you'll find the building project flyer. We want to encourage you always to keep this in mind and be prayerful about the faith promise dates on the back. See what the Lord has said to you as to what he would like you to do and what's your part to play in the building project. Also, you'll find the little envelope. You can put um, any cash offerings in there for the building project. And also, you'll find ministry opportunities for you. Take the time to read through that. Have a look on the back. See what might suit you. What area of service to the king might apply to you or what you would like to do to serve your brothers and sisters in Christ as you serve Jesus. Also, you find a blue care card. You fill this in with the praise and prayer points on your own behalf. Send it to the office where you can join you in prayer and praise. Or if there's an encouraging note you'd like to send to somebody in life of the church, you can use that also. If you're new with us this morning, we'd love to hear from you. You can fill your details in on the care card, tick a box with any information you'd like to know. Or if you changed your address, changed your phone number, changed your name, we'd like to know about it. So you can fill those care cards in watch church news on the screen. Come to that time in the service where we worship God with our tithes, with our offerings, with our gifts of thanks to Him. This past week I attended a funeral of um, my mum's cousin and was surrounded by what I like to say the great cloud of witnesses here on earth. A lot of elderly people that have known me since I was this big. It's a great testament to faith and to love. This man very quickly found out that he was very ill and within a month of his diagnosis had died. In that time, he sat with his pastors who were quite young men. He wrote his funeral service. He said explicitly, not too much weeping. I want celebration. He sat and typed out a whole chapter of Hebrews 11, the book of faith, because he said, I want to remind everyone that's there of what our life is on about. And he loved deeply. There was a gentleman behind me who started work with him in 1955. And he wanted to be there because this man was just an ordinary man. There were two fire trucks out the front because in, when he was 40, he decided to become a fireman. And he worked with a young team. And each one of those team were there to celebrate his life. Everything we do, every act of service, every way we treat people matters. It is seen and it is testament to God's love. And that's what he wanted. He wanted people to recognise that it wasn't because he was some great bloke, but it was because he served an awesome God. And that's why they were there celebrating. And we have a great hope that beyond this life, there is an extraordinary life. As we love people, God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only son, the greatest gift. As we endeavour to give back, we give through our time, we give through our talent, we give through our service, or we give through our love. Because we can do lots of wonderful things, but without love, the love of God. <coughs> counts as not. Church, we stand on the edge of a very exciting time. And we have an opportunity to give of ourselves, of our finances, of our time, of our talent, and of our love as we reach beyond our borders and into new borders. I hope you're filled with faith and excitement and courage and bravery. We've had some amazing words sewn into us over these past few weeks. Hold on to those words as we step out 
step out with a faith beyond borders and uh, change this world for God. Let's stand together, church. During the singing of this next song, the buckets will be passed around. And place your tithes, your offerings, your building pledges, and your care cards in those. Be blessed.
and Pastor Bron, just to make sure we know where all the kids' church is going to go there, and uh, get our heads around how the sound works, and and the uh, projector, and uh, the microphones, and all those kinds of things, right? So that's all set to go, and so uh, there will be a busy... Look, here's the thing, I've tapped some people on the shoulder, you're coming with me. If I didn't tap you on the shoulder, you're coming here, business as usual. Check out the Elbanto and see what you're rostered on for, yeah? Because there's a new chapter in Elbanto now. It's called the Cronada Campus, yeah, of Inspired Church. And uh, you could be rostered on the 9.30 there, the, the, the 8.30 here, the 10.30 there. But if I haven't seen you, you won't be or if Keith hasn't seen you or Catherine hasn't seen you. So if we have, thankfully we're part of the church plan. The, 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 new, the new chapter of Inspired Church in Cronada. But for majority of business as usual, if you came for the 8.30 before, you will continue. If you came for the 10.30, if you kind of didn't sort of weren't too uh, religious about which one you came to, just come to whichever one you were always coming to here. And uh, we'll take care of Kwanana as we grow Inspired Church in Kwanana. Isn't that cool? God is good? It's me? Yes? Come on. Um, it's now five weeks, I think, since we changed the name of this church to Inspired Church, and uh, I had hoped the signs would have been up, but they hopefully be up this week here and also in Quinana, and we're addressing all sorts of places and spaces where the old name kind of appears. We try never to answer the phone by saying the old name, although I did answer on Friday. Not only did I answer with the old name, I answered good afternoon, but it was still good morning, and, and, and I knew it was someone important on the other end, and it was. And, and he made sure that I will put my money in the square box, and uh, so I will. So next week, we officially, uh, Inspire Church officially launches the second campus in Kunana. And so, good question here is, why do we change the name? Well, a number of reasons, but see, when you have a, a name for your church that is based on the name of the suburb in which the church is located, well, the reason for that name is pretty obvious. It's the name of the suburb, and that's all there is to it. And sometimes that can be restricting because if you come from another suburb, other than, for this case, Baldivis, you may think, hey, I'm not really a Baldivian, and because I come from Spearwood or, or Serpentine or Mundajong or Warnbro or Port Kennedy or Rockingham or, or whatever, well, uh, and, and it's, yeah, they, they, they're the Baldivians. Well, if we're the inspired church, it doesn't really matter what suburb you come from. You're not locked out. You're not, if you're thinking, you think, wow, if I, half an hour's drive, I can get there. Uh, that's where I'm coming. And so the name inspire is more readily embraced by people, no matter what suburb you come from. And we, we, we are, this, this is our vision statement, a large, growing regional church of influence, regional. So we're a bit broader than the suburb in which we are. And so this morning we are on the cusp of the next exciting chapter of the story of this church. And I thought it might be helpful to give you a little bit of teaching on uh, about the name Inspire in the hope that it will not only be informational but inspirational, Inspire. And, uh, and the reason for the name change first is, as I said, uh, this church has influence beyond Baldivis, and many of you don't, don't live in Baldivis, but this is your church, spiritual church home, as we are, in regards to where you live. And so it's my prayer, is that this morning, uh, that, that as time unfolds, no matter what suburb you come from, uh, that you will find the necessary inspiration for living and serving and worshipping through the ministry of Inspire Church. Is that cool? Let's go for it. I, I must say that the fact that we are located in a subdivision called the Spire has kind of got our attention on that. So the word Inspire, in case you didn't know, this is the Spire subdivision we're here. We are Inspires. <laughs> the word Inspire for a, a Christian church is so relevant because we are called to live by the Spirit of God and by the breath. Of God and the word inspired or inspire appears throughout the scriptures. And I just want to give you a couple of uh, examples of that. Uh, here we go. Proverbs 31, verse 1, and also Proverbs 30 and verse 1 record these words inspired utterances. Uh, that, that is, the utterances uh, that are there in these, this proverbial wisdom uh, is inspired by God. Is inspired by God. 2 Samuel 23, verse 1. 
the inspired utterances of David. Uh, so the, the Psalms of David, what David said, it, which is recorded in your Bible, it's inspired by God. Revelation 22, verse 6, the Lord God inspired the prophets, or inspires the prophets, and yes, he does. Uh, and so I want to give you an understanding of the word inspiration. The New Testament was originally written in Greek, uh, you, you know that, and the Greek word translated inspire comes from a, a, a conglomerate of two Greek words, the word for God, theos, and the word for spirit, pneuma. And so when you put them together, it comes out uh, theos, pneustos, theos, pneustos in, in the verb form. So interestingly enough, the same Greek word for spirit is also the same Greek word for breath and the same Greek word for wind. And, and so I find it fascinating that in John chapter 3, verse 8, it says the wind, the pneuma, uh, blows where it will, so it is with the spirit, also pneuma. It's the same Greek word. Both wind and spirit, the same word. So when you come to 2 Timothy 3.16, in many translations, it comes out like this, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. If you've got the New International Version, it says all scripture is God-breathed. Inspired is God-breathed. So what I'm saying to you is that the, 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 the inspiration is the very breath of God and comes by the Spirit of God. So true inspiration is the breath of God coming by the Spirit of God. Inspiration, we might say, is the wind of the Spirit. And, and we need to adjust our sails to catch the wind of the Spirit. Inspiration is the breath of the Spirit of God and every believer, every person, in order to be truly spiritual, needs the breath of God, which is inspiration. You cannot help anyone else spiritually unless you are receiving the very breath of God, the Spirit of God yourself. Are you following this? Now, how many of you have traveled on airplanes? Yeah, just about everyone, yeah? I'm doing a helicopter soon, but most of you are traveling by airplane. When you get in the airplane, before you take off, they go through a little routine with you. It's a safety check, you know, and they give a safety talk. And many of you, because you travel every other month, whatever, you go, hey, here it is again, and you, you kind of switch off. But you probably need to listen because they tell you every time, there's a different airplane than the one you previously traveled in, so you need to listen up. And they give you a thing about the safety vest, yeah? And on the safety vest, yeah, yeah they got the whistle. I always think the whistle is fascinating, really. The whistle. I mean, if you drop down the Pacific Ocean, you got the whistle. There's a whistle. And someone's going to come, yeah? And, and, and you've got the flashlight. And I think that's out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. They go, just look at that flashlight. You know, they're coming over with the flashlight and they're hearing the whistle. And, and then they give you the, the line of lights. Follow the line of lights down to the exit. Exit left, or with right, whichever way you might be. So you follow the line of lights. And then there's the oxygen mask that falls down unless you're in some fancy place and you be somewhere or other else. And, 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 and this is what they say when, about the oxygen mask. They say, put your own on first. Before you go trying to help your, your, your child, whatever, put your own on first. Before you can spiritually help anyone else, you need the breath of God first. Uh, if you're on the airplane, if you run out of oxygen, you think, I'm going to help the next person. By the time you go to help them and get halfway through it, you're gone. You're not breathing anymore because you've got no oxygen. You, you need the, the spiritual breath of God before you can help anyone else. So I'm praying this morning that, that the spiritual oxygen mask will pop down and you'll put yours on before you can help anyone else. All scripture is inspired by God. And it's profitable uh, for all of the things that's mentioned in that scripture. And so we each need to get hold uh, of the Word of God, get ourselves into the Word of God, get the breath of the Spirit of God into us. That is inspiration. And I find this fascinating, following right on from 2 Timothy 3, 6, in all scripture is inspired by God, or is God breathed. It, it's 2 Timothy 4, 2, just a couple of verses later. And this is what it says to the preacher, preach the word, be urgent in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage, do the work of an evangelist. So what I'm hearing here, what I'm hearing is that, that, that the oxygen mask, the spiritual oxygen mask is going to come on down. And, and, and sometimes, sometimes uh, you, you're just not seeing it. And so here's, here's the preacher to crank up the, the, the oxygen, the spiritual mask for you. He's going to make sure it drops down so you get it. 
So you really breathe it in. And if you won't get any breath from the, the Spirit of God through the week, you certainly only get some today because all Scripture is inspired by God. Preach the Word. Be urgent in season and out of season. So I'm cranking it up this morning. The preacher is letting down the breathing apparatus for believers, but also for unbelievers. Because unbelievers have never even breathed this stuff in before. And, and so that, that, I think it's fascinating that both believers and unbelievers come into the house... The unbelievers probably never thought I was an unbeliever. They probably thought, well, I'm living in Australia, so I'm probably a Christian. Well, look, that's not it. You come into the house of God, you need to start spiritually breathing. And it's fascinating to me that every time I come into the house of God to preach, I think by the time we're done here today, there could be someone who came in who wasn't spiritually breathing before they got in, but by the time they left, they were. And I find that fascinating. And I, you know, that's something we can all pray into. as someone this morning. And, and, and I think about that. I think about that. The humble vacuum cleaners. In Australia, we just call it the vacuum cleaner, and when we do the stuff, we call it, we're doing the vacuum cleaning. Yeah? Now, in England, in the UK, there's a lot of UK people come here, they call it the Uber. Well, it's the Uber, but they drop the A's, they call it the Uber. And then they've done, they've done something grammatically wonderful with this that the English have. They've made a bird form out of it. They do the Ubering. They do. They go, when they do the Ubering, I suppose we're going to do the Ubering. In Australia, we do the vacuum cleaning, but they do the Ubering. Of course, that's the brand name of the most famous one they have. So do the Ubering. And I think, you know, the idea of the Uber, the Uber, the vacuum cleaner, is to pick up any bit of fluff or stuff on your floor. When you've got black carpet, you see it all. And, and that, that's the whole idea of doing the vacuum or the Ubering, to get rid of every little last bit that sucks it up and then. Come on, if, you've got, if it's not sucking up, you need to get a new one. And, and, and this is what I find. I think there's a lot of oofering going on that's sucking the goodness out of every human being on planet Earth. I think there's a lot of hoovering going on that's sucking out the spiritual breath of every person. Things like negativity going on, you know? Things like bad relationships. Things like a downturn with your financial endeavors. It's just hoovering everything out of you, you know? Anxiety about this or that. Uh, you know, just moving the, the goodness and the spiritual breath out of you. And so you need the spiritual oxygen mask to come on down so you get a good shot of spiritual breath into you today because all the stuff that's been proven sucked out of you. So put it on this morning. Breathe in the very Word of God because breathing in the Word of God, the breath of God, is called inspiration. And Jesus is here this morning to inspire you and to breathe life into you and, and and Jesus does this by inviting us to have his mind in us and to be inspired by his love for us or oh, how he loves us how he loves us Philippians 2 ch chapter 2 verses 5 to 11 have this mind in you the mind of Christ Jesus who though he was God sought not to grasp any quality but emptied himself took the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has most highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus. Jesus. Every knee should bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That ought to inspire you. That ought to inspire you. That has, that has, that has, that has, like, uh, that has, has ramifications that are eternal. Because one day every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father and we'll all be part of that. that. That is inspirational. That is the very breath of God. And so get this right and you will be inspired as you breathe in the very breath of God's Spirit. The love of God is inspirational. The love of God is, it inspires us. You just think about that. You come in here this morning, hey, well, no one loves me. I'm just filled out, and you're you saying, how he loves me, he, he, he loves me so much, and you get the love of Christ just inspiring you, he, God loves you, he gave, he, Jesus Christ gave his life for you on the cross, not just so that we can go, oh, well, now I've got to get back to wallow in comfortability, he, 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 he wants us to be his ambassadors, <coughs> that we might share his love and his life with others. And so 2 Corinthians 5, 14, the love of Christ compels me. Love of Christ inspires me. 
Love of Christ wants, makes me want to breathe so much more spiritually, <coughs> deeply. 2 Corinthians 5, 14, same one love of Christ compels me, says in the NEV, the love of Christ leaves me no choice. No choice but to be an ambassador for him because once the love of Jesus Christ touches you and grabs you, you will know the compulsion to get on and do whatever it takes to engage in the calling to partner with Jesus Christ in extending his kingdom. Now, that's inspirational, that we can be part of that, that compulsion, the love of Christ, and the inspiration flowing from, from the very spirit of God that calls us and motivates us to be Christ's ambassadors, calling people into reconciliation with God. 2 Corinthians 5.20 We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He inspires us to be his ambassadors. You know, we got this opportunity to do a building. Wasn't that fantastic? We got an opportunity to walk into another building that's already built to start another campus. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ, calling people to reconciliation. We get the opportunity to do that. And here's what I know about genuine inspiration. Love by 1 Thessalonians 1 3. Inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Inspired. Here's what I know about uh, genuine inspiration. The inspiration <coughs> that is based on, on, on our understanding of that Greek conglomerate word, uh, theopneustos, you know, God's spirit, God's breath. This genuine inspiration is the breath of God. This genuine inspiration is the very spirit of God breathing life into the believer to move according to the purpose and the plan of God. If, if you're inspired, you want to move according to the purpose and the plan of God. The genuine inspiration is the breath of God. The genuine inspiration it is the Spirit of God breathing life into an ordinary individual to cause them to be born again and become a genuine believer in Christ. The genuine inspiration is the breath of God. It is the Spirit of God breathing life into the gathered company of believers in the house of God as one, as one. Psalm 65 verse 8 in the NLT. What a joy. What a joy. <laughs> I was talking to someone during the week and talking about the Quinana thing and saying, you know, because they've been winding down and now they've wound up, that there's probably not the joy there that, that they ought to be in. And, and, and I said to this guy, I said, you know, when, when we go in there, we might frighten some of them because we actually clap about things. And he said, you know, when I first came to this church, so I went back outside again to see what the sign said because it said it was too much happiness going and they didn't think it was going to be a church. <laughs> and, and, and if you think like that, what, what you need to have a reinvention of, of your mindset. Church would be the most joyful place on planet Earth. We, we know, we, we've got the answer. We, we know that Jesus Christ died for us. We know that he did that to take away every last stumbling block that would stand between a relationship with an individual and their creator God. That, that ought to just rev us up and put so much joy into our hearts that we can't help it. We've got to shout out and clap it for, for his name. And so Psalm 65 verse 8 in the end, I'll say, what joy for those who choose to bring, you choose to bring near. You inspire shouts of joy. You inspire it. Breathe it into us. We can't. See, he does. In the house of the Lord, he inspires shouts of joy. And we need to give expression to that divine inspiration with shouts of joy and with hand claps for Jesus because he is the one that has given us the hope and the joy for him. This genuine inspiration, Jesus loves us so much. He's alive, he's working us and through us. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's worth a shout for hallelujah, isn't it? It really is. He's so wonderful. And, and, and this genuine inspiration is, is the wind of the Spirit, you know. And, and God wants us to adjust our sails to catch that wind. Now, we're landing this message now, so fast your seatbelts because we go up for it right here. Psalm 111, verses 3 to 9 in the NLT. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. He causes us to remember His wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. All He does is just and good. 
and all his commandments are trustworthy. They are forever true, to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. He has paid a full ransom for his people. He has gathered, he has guaranteed his covenant with them forever. What a holy, awe-inspiring name he has. The name of Jesus is awe-inspiring. It's not just inspiring, it's awe-inspiring. And my friends, today we are on the cusp of the next exciting chapter of the story of this church, the inspired church. Jesus is here and he wants to breathe his life into us. That is inspiration. Let's adjust our sails to catch the wind of his spirit. Father in heaven, thank you so much. Thank you so much that you called us to be a part of what you're doing. You've called us to be a part of the next exciting chapter of the story of this church. You want to breathe your life into us. All scripture is God breathed. You want to breathe your life into us. Inspired utterances. The inspired prophetic word. The very breath of God. The very wind of the spirit. Father, we want to adjust our sails this morning to catch that wind. I want to pray for every individual. Lord, for those in the house who, who are not sure whether they are a genuine believer or not, but by the time they leave here this morning, Lord, they will have adjusted their sails to catch that wind of your spirit. They will allow you, Father God, to breathe uh, your, the, the, your, your, your word into each one here this morning. Father God, I'm praying for your miraculous as you breathe into us the very life of your spirit. Thank you, our Father God. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, church. I don't know if you know it, but I hope you do, and I hope you pick up on it. We worship and serve such an awesome God. Our God is healer. If you need a healing, lead into God. Wonderful Lord and God. He, 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 he's a transformational God. He can, he can turn water into wine. He can turn broken people into whole people. Wonderful Lord of God. We get to partner with him in reaching out and, 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 and through us, he touches the lives of other people. And this morning, he wants to touch your life. If you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, today could be your day. As the Spirit of God breathes his word transforming life into you, his life transforming word into you, he say, no, I've done that, I've done that, but I really do need some transformational work done in my life. Jesus is the one that will do that. He's here to inspire you this morning. I want to give you the opportunity this morning. You know, you can, you can, you can process all that God is doing with you wherever you stand or sit in the auditorium, but there is something powerful about bringing it down the front. We call it the altar call. Bring yourself to the altar and allow God to touch your life in a way that he never has before, that you've never experienced before. I wish you that this morning. Make your way down the front this morning in Jesus' wonderful name. Let's sing out our song as we give all honor, all glory to our Father God. Let's sing.
coffee shops open, this now is a place of ministry, so uh, uh, any conversation you may have started or want to start or continue, that will be in the foyer, in the bookshop or in the coffee shop. Bless you guys, got a great service here tonight at 6 o'clock. And uh, uh, next Sunday, next Sunday business as usual here, uh, the, the guest preacher is not a guest, he's one of our staff here now, Pastor Lee McIntosh will be preaching here next Sunday morning at the 8.30 and the 10.30. Bless you guys, fantastic day, see you again soon. Thank you.